In this two-part video, we are taking a detailed look at garment fitting workflows in vStitcher, focusing on the existing software tools that we use. Some of these tools are similar to tools that exist in the physical world, and others are unique to the 3D world. The combination shows the real power of 3D for garment fitting. Let's get started with our first demo. In this demo, we focus on a fitting of a sports bra. We can see at a glance that there is some puckering in the armholes. Besides that, the bra looks good. The tension and pressure maps are especially useful tools to review garments fit. They display a color-coded map on the garment, showing the tension or pressure for each part of the garment based on the physics of the fabric. Let's open the tension map first. It displays how stretched out a fabric is when the garment is worn. White means the fabric is not being stretched, no tension, and red means the fabric is being stretched to the maximum, hence the most tension. We can see that the map is mostly yellow. For a sports bra, this is fine as we want the bra to be able to stretch when the wearer moves, but not so much that it does not give support to the bust. We can also see the area of the puckering in the armholes is green, meaning it is too loose. Now let's open the pressure map. It displays how much the garment is pressing on the body. White means no pressure, and red means the most. Here we can see small red patches along the mesh, which means that the garment is too stretched out in these areas and pressing too hard on the body. This would most likely be uncomfortable for the wearer. To fix this, let's start by opening the stitch tool to investigate what the issue may be. We click the stitch between the strap and the armhole to choose it. Then we go to the context view and use the Release Stitch feature, increasing it to 45%. This feature simulates cutoffs that we do in a physical fitting process. In the 3D window, we can see the Release Stitch effect. The neckline jumps inwards, and the notch on the straps jump up. This could mean that the neckline for the bra is too closed for this style, and that the length of the strap is not long enough. To fix the puckering, we use the Slash and Spread feature to remove some excess near the armhole and open up the neckline slightly. In other words, we are doing a slash and close. We position the slash lines in the area with the puckering. Then we go to the context view and set the start value to reduce by 1.5 centimeters. Then we click dress to see the result. We'll change the notch accordingly and move it down by 1.5 centimeters using transformations. Now to see the result, we need to set the release stitch back to zero and dress. The fix looks good, so we implement the slash and spread. We improve the neckline shape by removing unnecessary points and adjusting the line's curves. To be sure we did not miss something, we lower the grid to see more detail. Let's reduce it to 0.5. We can see that something is still not quite right here. We open the tension map again. The map in this area is still orange, which means that the 1.5 centimeters we added was not enough. Another indication that the strap is not long enough is the difference of the length between the 2D and 3D length. The 2D pattern measurement for the strap is 22.5, and the 3D is stretched to 42 centimeters. That is almost double the length and means that it is too stretched out. We extend the length of the strap by 7 centimeters. Once we dress, the color in the tension map becomes more yellow. To improve, we can add two more centimeters. Now the tension map looks much better. The 2D length is now 31.5 centimeters, and in 3D, it's stretched to 43 centimeters, which is not too big of a difference. Let's go back and fix the armhole area. We could continue the way we did before, but this will widen the neckline even more so we will do this manually. With the pen tool, we mark the area that needs to be fixed and then add a manual dart. To avoid the garment from simulating while we make the changes, we duplicate this piece using the Ctrl-D keyboard shortcut or Command-D if using a Mac. First, we extend the lines to the edge and then slice. Then we locate the gizmo on this middle point and rotate it slightly to overlap. We next use the measurement tool, enabling snap to point, to measure how much we have moved the line. We now know the amount that we need to adjust, which is to cut out about 1 centimeter from the armhole and 7 millimeters from the bottom edge of the bra pattern. 
let's merge these pieces to form a new pattern piece. We can delete the separated pieces as they are no longer necessary. We need to replace the original pattern with this new pattern. To be able to use the replace function, the new pattern must have the same number of corner points as the old pattern. So we either delete any additional corner points or change them to regular points. Now that the new piece is cleaned up, we first want to create inner symmetry for this shape. We slice the pattern in the middle by drawing a line using the slice option. Next, we delete one of the sides. Now we add edge symmetry to the center front edge. This pattern is now ready. To replace the pattern pieces, we choose both pieces. Then on the resources tabs, we click the hamburger menu, replace between two selected. We dress to see the results. Before moving on, we delete the internal lines that are not needed anymore. Due to all the changes, the side seam is not balanced. To improve it, we use slash and spread with a value of one centimeter for the spread end. Once again, we dress the garment. The main advantage of fitting in 3D is that we can try out any values without ruining the garment. For example, we can operate by trial and error to see what gives the best results. Let's try slash and spread with two centimeters instead to see the effect. This looks good, but one centimeter was better, so we undo that change. To finish this step, we implement the slash and spread and shape the line slightly. The next step is to match the lining to the new shape. Similar to what we did for the shell pattern, we duplicate the new piece for the lining and disable Use in 3D. We select the original lining and enable Use in 3D. We switch between the shapes using the replace function and then dress to see the changes. We see the outcome in the 2D and the 3D window. We delete the other piece that is not in use anymore. Lastly, to avoid the lining from rolling out, we move the center point of the lining down by three millimeters. Dress, and that's it. Our bra is ready. Let's move to our second demo where we will be sharing how to do fittings on a pair of pants. The pants are too large and don't fit well. There are drag lines on the back, and at the front there are slight vertical drag lines to the rise. Using the tension map, we see that the tension of the rise is very low. Before continuing, we go to the context view and temporarily increase the transparency of the fabric used for the pants. This makes it easier to do a fitting as we can see the body through the pants. Another useful tip is to use the 3D measuring tape. When we click on the 3D measuring tape icon, a pop-up window with the relevant measurements for the avatars opens. Note that these measurements must be added manually using the tool before we can use them for fitting. Once we have all the required measurements of the avatar saved, we can select the measurements to always show so that the measurements show in 3D while we do the fitting. Here we select the hip value. In the 3D window, we trace the hip measurement with the pen tool to show the placement of the hip on the garment. In the 2D window, the lines that we traced in the 3D window are angled. It seems to be just a slight angle. To be sure, we replace the pants fabric with a two by two centimeter grid texture. Our estimation was correct. The angle is only a bit more than one centimeter, so we leave it as is and move on to the more severe issues. This is a great method to check if your garments are balanced. Let's start by fixing the rise. As we said, it's too low. To know how much to shorten by, we first must disable Use in 3D for only one side of the pants. Then we dress and finish the simulation. Next, we open the 3D measuring tool and add a new measurement. We choose the straight measurement method. Note that the 3D measuring tool is mainly for measuring the avatar, but we can also utilize some of the options to help with fitting. Press Control or Command if you're using a Mac and click on the avatar's crotch and then on the garment. In the 3D measurements pane, we see that there is a gap of 5.5 centimeters between the avatar's crotch and the pants crotch. The gap is too large, so we need to reduce it slightly. We do not need to save this measurement, so we close the 3D measurements pane. Next, we check the notches on the side seam of the patterns. 
these notches should be on the widest part of the avatar. On these patterns, they seem to be in the right place, so there's no need for an adjustment. We need to move the crotch point up to shorten the rise. We select the crotch points and the intermediate point above it and use the transformation tool to move these up by 3 centimeters on both sides of the pants. Once again, we dress the garment. To check the fitting results, we bring the other leg back by enabling Use in 3D. There are still vertical drag lines that start in the hip and on the back part of the pants. Now we want to fix the front crotch. Before making any changes, it is best practice to enable trace changes in the 2D window toolbar so we can check if we make a mistake when adjusting. Using the grid texture, we move the crotch point out by 2 cm, which is one square in the pants grid, and shape the curve using the point handles. After dressing the garment, it looks much better. Now we want to fix the back patterns. Here it's baggy under the bum, with diagonal drag lines pointing up the hip. This may indicate that the back seam curve needs to be taken in. For example, if we pinch the garment up like this, it looks much better. We sort this using the slash and spread feature to establish how much we need to cut from the piece. We can add a slash line on the back rise and make it a slash and close. Once again, we can do this by trial and error. Let us start with negative 2 centimeters. We need to reduce it slightly more, so let's try negative 2.5 centimeters. This looks much better. We implement the slash and spread and slightly shape the curve of the rise to be smooth. On the waist area, there are still drag lines pointing to the back rise. Since we have reduced the back seat previously, the waistline was moved in. We move it back one centimeter and dress. The drape doesn't look good. Instead, we try moving only the center back point by one centimeter. It's looking much better. Now that we have fixed the issue on the rise of the pants, we can move on to the bottom part of the pants. Before making any changes, we no longer need the grid for the pants, so we've replaced the grid fabric with the original French terry fabric. For the bottom of the pants, the fitting looks too wide. We select the front and back hem edges. The total length in the 2D is 41 centimeters, but it is stitched to a cuff and it is 26.7 centimeters in 3D. We are looking for about 30% of shrinkage in the 3D, but it's almost 50%. To calculate the correct hem measurement, we need to take the cuff measurement, 26.7 centimeters, and multiply it by 130%, which is 34.7 centimeters we can round the value up to 35 centimeters. That means we need to cut out six centimeters from the hem measurement. So we should remove three centimeters from the front and back hem. To do so, we click on the measurement display in the 2D window, type in negative three and click enter. This automatically calculates the value for us. Let's dress the garment to see the result. The garment is now balanced. In this video, we reviewed fitting workflows for a bra and pants. Join us for the second part of the video where we'll show you fitting workflows for a jacket and leggings. For more information about vStitcher features, check out our help center at support.browseware.com.